so welcome to experiments number two translation equilibrium so we will be uh, experimentally demonstrating uh, our force table so this is a force table and these are three pulleys so this is the first pulley uh, we can call this pulley to be uh, our f1 pulley because we will be putting masses here this is our second pulley and this is our third pulley so all these three pulleys are adjustable these are the mass hangers these these are used to hang the masses so this is the first pulley this is the second or this this one is the third pulley so these are mass hangers and these are strings that provide the necessary tension force now this is the plastic ring that it should be exactly at the center you can see that that it if it if it is not at the center then the system will not be in equilibrium so make sure you have to keep it at the center and one more thing is it should not rest on the table like it should not be touching the center of this force table so this is our force table and you can clearly see that this it is calibrated there are degrees so our first pulley is positioned at zero degree exactly it is at zero degree and our second pulley is uh, positioned at 120 degree and our third pulley is positioned at 240 degrees so how to adjust the pulleys i will briefly explain so how to adjust the pulley so this is the pulley keep uh, make sure and you have to be aware of this that these three pulleys must be on the same level so how to adjust these pulleys so there is a screw there is this is an adjustable screw so if you rotate it anti clockwise so you can keep the pulley a little up or a little down so it depends you have to keep all the pulleys at the same level then you have to rotate it anti clockwise and fix its position how to move this pulley on this table how to move this and how to rotate this pulley on this table then there is another screw right at the bottom you have to unscrew again and then you can move this pulley accordingly so when we, you move this pulley you have to look at the center of this force table the ring or the plastic glass should be at the center of this force table so initially its position was at zero degree so uh, so it will be better if you keep the pulleys at pulley one let's say this is our pulley one this is our pulley second and this is our third pulley so it will be better to keep the first and the second pulley at fixed positions so you can keep the first pulley anywhere you want but for the sake of simplicity and for ease of calculations you can keep it at zero degree so this is our first pulley right so this is our first pulley this is our second pulley it is right at 120 degrees so it is also also adjustable like just like the first one and this is our third pulley so and this was our degree scale and this is the force table these are the threads that this is our mass hanger and on this mass hanger you can also there is a hook so you can adjust the length of the string by you can adjust the length of the string just like this so this rod is for hanging the masses so let's say this is a 10 gram mass so you will have to put it here and then you will hang it above the pulley you will hang it just like this so you will have to keep the system in translational equilibrium the first thing you should keep in mind is this plastic ring should be at the center all the time it should not be at the left or the right from the anchor point so it, it should be exactly at the center keep in mind so when this is at center the system is in translation equilibrium and then you can proceed so how to proceed the first thing is to make it at center let's say i am using for the first experiment i will perform two experiments actually there are three experiments the first was for 15 15 grams the second was for 30 30 and the third one was was for different so we can uh, use different masses uh, i can use 10 10 grams or 5 5 grams it depends but the procedure should be understood Let's say for the first case I am using 3 masses of 10 grams. So I will put the first mass here, then the second mass in the second pulley in the hanger, the mass hanger, these are the slotted masses and this is the third mass in the third pulley. Now we have to understand, now the system is not in equilibrium. You can see that the plastic ring is a little 
it is not at the center how to make it at center we have to rotate let's say this is our f1 and this is our f2 now you have to do is to make it uh, bring it to the anchor point so for this you can adjust the third pulley you can adjust any of these but better to adjust the third one from the uh, from the theory and calculations part that if this is f1 this is our f2 and if i keep this force here on the head of the first vector then the resultant will be here right in the middle of these two vectors so if this is the resultant force if this is the resultant of these two forces let's say this is f1 this is f2 and this is the resultant force right in between the, these vectors then clearly we can see that this is that balancing force that balances this resultant force so this is our equilibrium force it, it is understood that this force is balancing the effect of these two forces or we can say that this equilibrium force is balancing the resultant force of these two vectors so this is all about the previous lecture now how to experimentally determine the masses and how to solve this force table so at the bottom of this force table you will find a screw adjustable screw so you can rotate the uh, this pulley accordingly you have to keep it at the center so let's say when i keep it at 240 degrees and the pulley should be at the same level right so if it is right at the center let's say if it is right we have to bring it at 240 degrees so if it is not at the center it means you have to change the masses and uh, if this is the let's say you are want you want that this f1 mass and f2 masses are fixed then you will change the equilibrium pulley masses to balance these two forces definitely if you want to balance this two for these two forces you will change the masses here or if you are using the same masses in our case we are using 10 gram of mass and the mass of the hanger is 5 grams so the total mass of the first pulley is 15 grams the second pulley is 15 grams and the third one is also 15 grams now in this situation we all we, the, all of the three pulleys have the same masses so it means that we have to then adjust the third pulley to keep it at the center in the first case because all of the masses are same so let's say right uh, it is eight right so it is exactly at the center so you have to then use the screw to tighten this pulley so it is now exactly right it is exactly at the center so our system is now in translational equilibrium now we will proceed now we will find the forces and then we will talk about its components and then we will resolve it and we will find the resultant of these two forces experimentally graphically and mathematically uh, now we will find the masses the weights actually these are weights so when you hang these masses over these pulleys it, it is it provides a force this is the masses we have to find this f1 force so actually we can call these masses now weights so how to calculate the f1 f1 we we talk we discussed in our previous lecture that f1 is equal to let's say this is our mass one so i'm calling this m1 and we know the value of g so if this is uh, 10 plus 5 the mass so we know that the mass of the hanger is 5 grams and the mass of the slotted mass of 10 grams so we will get 15 grams of total mass for this first case for the first pulley so if you are using the same system of units let's let's divide this 15 grams by 1000 so we will get 0 0.015 kg so we will have to convert them to si units now for the second case this is f2 we know that in the second case we are using the same masses so we will get the same value for f2 so we will get f2 is also uh, the mass for the second case is also 0 0.015 kg so to find f1 f1 is equal to 0 0.015 kg multiplied with 9.8 meters per second square so when you multiply the mass with the gravitational acceleration you get f1 is equal to you so you will get f1 is equal to 0.147 newtons so this is your f1 and definitely our second force will be exactly the same 0.147 newton this is our second force and now to this is 
by looking on to the table by looking on to the table our f1 is at theta 1 so this will be the, our theta 1 this will be our theta 2 and this is our theta e the angle of the equilibrant force so if you see our first pulley is at theta 1 so our theta 1 is at 0 degrees and our second value it, it is at uh, 120 degree our second force is acting at 120 degrees and you can see from the equilibrium force it is acting at 200 and so I am calling this theta E it is acting at 240 degrees so by just looking onto the table this is our experimental part you can see you can clearly say that this is at 0 this is at 120 and the equilibrium force is acting at 240 degrees now you can uh, easily you can easily say that the resultant force will be in opposite in the, in the resultant force will be in opposite to in opposite in direction to the equilibrium force so if this is 240 this will be the resultant force so how to do it just subtract 180 degrees from this 240 degrees so you will get the direction of the resultant force and the magnitude of the resultant force will be exactly equal to the magnitude of this uh, equilibrium force so you can find the magnitude of the equilibrium force to be uh, F, F E is equal to mass I am calling this MEG. So FE is equal to masses are same. So the mass will be 0 0.015 kg into 9.8 meter per second square. Again, we will get the same value 0 0.147 newtons. So this will be 0 0.147 newtons. So we have find the magnitude of this equilibrium force and it is about 0 0.147 newtons. So it means that the magnitude of our resultant force must be 0 0.147 newtons and it, it will be if you subtract 180 degrees from uh, 240 you will get exactly 60 degrees so your uh, resultant force will be at 60 degrees here so this is the way how to uh, how to find uh, the resultant force experimentally so it was very easy and keep in mind this plastic ring should not should not be resting on this table it try it should be right at the middle and you will be not dist and you will not be disturbing this throughout the experiment so the system should always be in translation equilibrium so the first case was for 10 or uh, 15 grams 15 grams and 15 grams so same masses now we i will perform the third experiment the second uh, experiment is just to uh, replace these masses by different uh, by let's say 30 grams 30 grams and 30 grams so in the third experiment we will be using different masses and then we will find the resultant of these forces then i will plot these vectors on a graph and you will understand how to scale accordingly so how to scale you will find this from your f1 force f2 force so the scale should be according to the forces you have determined and then we will verify the parallelogram law of addition now the in the first case this is our experimental part we have find the direction of our equilibrium force that was about 240 degrees so you will write there here 240 degrees now now the magnitude of the equilibrium force was 0.147 newton so we know that if the magnitude of the equilibrium force was 0.147 newton the magnitude of the resultant force will also be equal to 0.147 newton and the direction of this resultant force can be easily determined if we subtract 180 degrees from 240 degrees so we will get a value of here 60 degrees so this is the way how to perform for the experimental part then we will be plotting these vectors according to a suitable scale and then we will graphically determine its magnitude and direction of the resultant force and magnitude and direction of the equilibrium force then for the second case we will de determine the resultant force mathematically and we will find its magnitude and direction mathematically mathematically and from this math mathematical calculations we can easily determine the equilibrium force magnitude and direction so if it means that if you know the theta r the direction of the resultant force you can easily find the direction of the equilibrium force so the uh, so from the equilibrium force direction you can find the direction of the 
resultant force and from the resultant force direction you can find the direction of the equilibrium force so this is very simple uh, we have already discussed this in our theory and calculations part so we, you have to fill this table for three experiments the first case was for 15, 15 uh, for the same masses then the second case was also for the same masses and the, the third case will be for different masses and then you will have three graphs for the first case for the second case and for the third case so this is the way how to perform this experiment and the purpose of this experiment to find the so to find a force that balances the effect of two forces that is known as the that is known as the equilibrium force so this is the way how to do it now we will change the masses now we will change the masses and i will be using different masses now and then we will have to bring this glass to the center of this table to make it at, uh, to make it in translational equilibrium now i will be using different masses so this is a mass of this is a mass of 10 grams so with including the mass of the hanger this is 15 grams and this is one is 5 grams and the other one is 10 grams so if the, including the mass of the hanger it will give us a total of 20 grams and this is a mass of 20 grams so with the, including the mass of the hanger it will give 25 grams so 15, uh, 15 20 and 25 grams so now we are using different masses and the procedure and the initial setup is exactly the same you just have to bring the system in so the hard part is to keep the to keep the balance to, to keep the system in translation equilibrium is the hard part so you should be aware that the plastic ring i am repeating this again and again that the plastic ring should be at the center so if it if it is a ring or it is a plastic glass it is a plastic ring or it is a uh, ring just just a ring then you will have to always have to keep it at the center keep in mind then you will proceed and you will find the forces so first i will put the 10 gram mass in the first hanger in the first hanger so this is our first hanger first pulley of our f1 now i will place the second force to be this is 20 grams including the mass of the hanger and the third one is the 20 gram mass and including the mass of the hanger it will give us 25 now you can see that this is now not in equilibrium this is not in equilibrium so how to adjust this we have to adjust the third pulley we will rotate it either to the left or to the right to keep to bring it to the center so how to do it right at the bottom of this pulley we have a screw you have to un you have to loosen it a little and then you will rotate this accordingly to bring the plastic glass to the center or the plastic ring to the center so in order to make this in equilibrium we have to adjust either this pulley or if it is not working then you can also adjust this one you can adjust the first so keep not to uh, disturb the first one it should be at the it should be at zero degree so either disturb this one better to disturb the equilibrium force pulley so if it is not working then you can disturb this one we cannot change the masses let's say the condition is not to change the masses these are different masses 10 uh, 20, 15 20 and 25 so let's say uh, i'm i'm bringing this to it uh, i'm bringing this to 240 degrees let's say and i'm fixing it at 240 degrees now let's say i'm disturbing this one the second so you lose right at the right at its bottom unscrew the unscrew it and rotate the pulley a little bit let's say it i keep it at 90 degree let's say keep it at 90 degrees so you have to adjust it accordingly to keep the system in equilibrium now i am disturbing the third pulley again you know how to loosen it and how to adjust it this screw is for this side screw is for leveling this pulley up and down and the bottom screw is to rotate the pulley so i think a 240 in between 230 and 40 we will adjust it 235 degrees a 200 and no so at 233 degrees so our first force is now the system is exactly and very perfectly in 
translational equilibrium you can see that it is right at the center of the force table now our first force is at 0 degree f1 is at 0 degree f2 is at 90 degrees and our equilibrium force is at 200 and so you should look it at the top not from this side so this is actually the parallel axis error you should be looking on fr from the top from the top of the table you will be looking uh, you will be determining the angle from the top of top of the force table so this is exactly 230 231 232 and 233 degrees so our equilibrium force is at 233 degrees so we have find the forces how to find the forces f1 is equal to m1g mass is now 15 grams then you have to divide 15 grams by 1000 and you will get 0 0.015 kg then you will determine the force f1 from here the force f2 from here and we know that the resultant of these two forces will be here this is the equilibrium force so the procedure is the same just the masses are different then we will uh, how to calculate them mathematically you will be using f1 components x and y components how to do it i have explained it in the pre previous lecture how, then the components of the second force and the components there is no need to calculate the components for the equilibrium force then you will find theta from the tan inverse fy by fx this you will it will find you will find the magnitude and as well as the direction math mathematically and how to do it graphically now using this graph paper we will plot f1 f2 the resultant and the equilibrium force so for all of the three experiments for all of the three tasks for the same masses for different masses and for same masses but of different values so this graph i will plot just for the for only only for the first case you will plot it for the, uh, the rest of the two cases so i will just explain how to scale and how to plot so this was our f1 force now our f2 force was also 0.147 newton so this was our f2 force we have to select a suitable scale so how to scale let's say our 0.1 newton is 5 centimeter let's say you can select any of a suitable scale according to your results so let's say 0.1 newton is 5 centimeter so this means that 1 newton will be 5 divided by 0.1 centimeter so this implies that uh, this implies that 1 newton will be equal to 50 centimeter now our f1 force is 0 0.147 our f1 force is 0 0.147 so if i multiply 0 0.147 here with 1 newton and 0 0.147 with 50 centimeter so this implies that 0 0.147 newton is equal to 0 0.7.35 centimeter so this means that the length of our vector that we will be plotting in our graph on our graph paper will be 7.35 centimeter and it will be representing 0 0.147 newton so we know that our theta 1 was 0 degrees and our theta 2 was 120 degrees so then we will find the resultant from this so how to plot this on a graph paper this is the graph paper so first we will need a scale and a protector so a protector and a scale you should write a proper scale over here so the scale is you should write it on the top of the graph paper is our 0 0.147 newton is equal to 7.35 centimeter you can write even the whole one new so you have considered one newton to be 50 centimeter and then your 0 0.147 newton will be equal to 7.35 centimeter so this is the way how to now how to plot the vector so let's say let's say this is our i will draw it on pen you can use pencil so let's say this is our positive x axis and this is we will first draw the axis you can use dots so this is our positive x axis and this is our negative 
x axis now our first vector the length of our first vector will be calculated using this scale so 0. 7.35 centimeter from so from here to here is 7.35 centimeter and the direction of the first vector is 0 degrees so 0 degrees means that if you if you are using uh, a protractor you can find from this you can find using this protractor or you can just simply say that 0 degrees will be exactly on this positive x axis so it means that you will draw a length of the length of the vector will be according to our scale which is 7.5 centimeter so here is 7.5 centimeter so this will be actually the length of our vector this is our first vector so i will draw it on pencil the vector should be like this so this is our first vector f1 this is our f1 and f1 is equal to 0 0.147 newton and the length of this vector is 7.35 centimeter so this is 7.35 centimeter and the angle theta 1 is equal to 0 degrees so it is parallel to positive x axis and the second angle is at 120 degrees so for this you will be using the this protractor so you will keep this protractor at the center of on the positive on the axis and then you will draw 120 degrees is here and then the length of the vector will be according to this scale according to this scale so the length of the vector is again the same 7.5 centimeter so this is our 7.5 centimeter in a direction of 120 degrees so this is 7.12345 so this is 7.5 centimeter So F2 is here. This is F2. F2 is 0 0.147 Newton and its angle is 120 degrees. Now the resultant of these two forces will be here. So we, you will have to plot a resultant of these two vectors. And the length of the resultant vector is also 0 0.147 but we will draw it on our scale 0 0.147 and the angle you will have to determine the angle of the resultant force you should find it in the force table you we, we have calculated that the resultant of the uh, this system was the resultant of the two forces was we subtracted 240 degrees 180 degrees from the equilibrium angle so we got 60 degrees we know that from the force table that the direction of our resultant force will be 60 degrees so you can again use protector so this is our protector and we will draw a 60 degree point now we will plot a 0 0.147 in this direction in of a resultant force in this direction we using a pencil so this will be our 0 0.147 and the length of the vector is 7.35 centimeter You can use the dotted lines for the resultant vector. So we know that this is the angle of the resultant vector theta r and it is equal to 60 degrees and this is the angle of theta 2 which is 120 degrees. The, these two forces F1 f2 and fr so this is our fr vector this is our fr f2 and f1 now using the parallelogram law of addition if i place this f2 here this is our f2 so if i place this vector and then i add the second vector i will get again this 
resultant vector. So we, I will get the same resultant vector. It means that a plus b, if there are two vectors, a plus b, and they, this give a resultant of vector r, then if I add the second vector first and then the second vector and then the first vector, I will get the same resultant. So this is the way. So if write, so this is the way how to plot a vector. So now this is f2. So if keep it parallel and translate it here. So its parallel vector will be here. I can use dotted lines or you can use just a solid line. So this will be f2. This, is, this will be our f2. Parallel to f2 is f2. And parallel to f1. And f1 will be here. This is our f1. So parallel to f1 is f1 and parallel to f2 is f2. So now if you want to plot the equilibrium force, so this equilibrium force will be exactly at t parallel to the fr. So it will be also in, uh, have, it will have the same magnitude. So plot again 0. 147 Newton having a length of 7.35 centimeter exactly anti parallel to the resultant force. So this will you can also draw a solid line for this case. So this is our 7.35 centimeter equilibrium force. So I will make it a little prominent. So this is our equilibrium force F E. This is our equilibrium force and the direction of this equilibrium force is this from the positive x axis theta e so if, if you know that so if you know theta r is determined from tan inverse f y by f x this is for the mathematical parts not for this graphical part so if you find the theta r so our resultant for the our equilibrium force is in third quadrant so it means that our equilibrium force angle can be determined if i aid 180 degree with the resultant force direction so it means that theta e is equal to 180 degrees plus 60 degree so you will get 240 degrees of our equilibrium force that we exactly we determined from our force table and when all the masses were same so this is for the first case now you then you will repeat this experiment for the second case and for the case of different masses so this was all about the translational equilibrium we have to this was the force table pulleys threads masses mass hangers and the this should this force table should be horizontal on this surface and keep in mind it should be resting on this table properly it should be resting this on this table properly then we will make the system in equilibrium and then after that we will go for the forces we will find this force f1 f2 equilibrium force and from these forces we will find it experimentally graphically and mathematically the resultant force and the equilibrium force so so this was all about the uh, experiment number 2 translation equilibrium thank you